Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice equation. I know some of you are thinking, what is so special about this equation? 2 to the power, this number equals 1. You probably know the answer, right? Let's not say it right now in case somebody is new to this. But 2 to the power x equals 1 looks like a really easy problem. Well, normally we have another problem uh, that appeared on the channel and you've probably seen it, hopefully. If you haven't, uh, it published... I mean, it will publish at this point because it didn't. But anyways, it's going to be publishing at 7 a.m. U.S. Pacific time. So, I don't know what it is for... Um, what is it called? UTC? Anyways, this we, we, we have an equation like this, 2 to the power x equals 1. How do you solve it, right? And probably you're saying, okay, x equals 0. There you go. Done. Okay. Well, even though this channel is not all about complex numbers because I have another channel called A plus BI in case you haven't checked it yet and go ahead and check it out watch the videos there's a playlist anyways we're gonna be looking at some complexities here okay or complexifications so first of all you know x equals 0 satisfies this equation right if I gave you something like this 2 to the power x equals 0 this would not have any solutions at all right even in the complex world. But if I told you 2 to the power x equals negative 1, you would know that, okay, this equation has no real solutions. You, you know that, right? 2 to x cannot be negative. But we're, we are going to be extending it to the world of complex numbers because that's going to make it more interesting. So here's how we go. First of all, a couple of things to know. Uh, every complex number can be written as e to the power i theta, which is equivalent to cosine theta plus i sine theta. And theta represents the angle. So on the argon plane, complex plane, whatever, we have this angle. We have the number z, which you can write as e to the i theta. And of course, you can also multiply it by r, which is called the modulus. And you can just multiply both sides by r here to get the idea. This is called the real, this is called the imaginary, so on and so forth. But how do you write 2 as a complex number? Yes, you can. But I'll show you something else. Because we have an x on the left, so we don't really have to worry too much about 2. But we should probably focus on one. But I'll show you some variations and you'll hopefully get to decide which one is more accurate. Because there are two schools of thought on this and I don't know what I uh, should be choosing. Anyways, so here's what we're going to do. First, we're going to write one as a complex number. How do you write one as a complex number? R, the modulus, the distance from zero is one. So if you think about where one is located on the coordinate system, it's right here on the real axis. And it's only one unit away. So its modulus is 1, which is r. So it's going to be 1 times e to the power. The angle it makes seems to be 0 radians, but you can also add 2 pi to it. Keep adding 2 pi to it. So we're going to express that with 2 pi n. But in the complex world, the theta is always multiplied by i. The general form is e to the i theta. So we got to multiply this by i. And there you go. This is the complexified version of 1. And you don't really need to worry about it. This will just suffice, and ha there you go. This is something that we use a lot. If you want to complexify solutions, we can just multiply by that on one side, and the rest will follow, especially for solu equations with real solutions. You can just attach it if you wanted to complex solutions. Of course, we're talking about exponential equations here, right? So, and with the no logarithms, if you ln1, then this would be 2 pi and i in general. Notice that this is a multi-valued function because if you think about it, n is an integer. Did I forget to say that? I always do, but you probably guessed it. Uh, this will take infinitely many values. But if you wanted to go with the principal value, then you pick the theta, a special value, and go with that. Okay, that us that's usually specified. Now, let's go ahead and see how we can use this fact to solve this problem. Now, what do we have? What's the problem? I forgot. 2 to the power x equals 1. Now, for 2, I'm going to do the following. I'm going to write it as e to the power ln 2, right? And then just raise it to the power x, and this will be e to the power 2 pi ni. You can also think of it this way. If you have z to the power w, z and w are complex numbers, this can also be written as e to the power w ln z. And you got to remember, this is called a complex logarithm, and there's a way to do it, but... Because ln z is multi-valued, z to the w is also multi-valued. So there is no single value that you can say, uh-oh, z to the w is always equal to this. That's why we can write 1 in infinitely many forms. Great, so let's go ahead and multiply this. And even if you use this approach, 
you would arrive at the same result, which means we can do it e to the power x ln 2 equals e to the power 2 pi n i. Nice. Where do we go from here? Since the bases are equal, so are the exponents. Or we can do the following. If e to the power, if e to the power t is equal to e to the power z, this implies t is equal to z, right? I mean, even in the complex world, it should. But with, some, with a word of caution, you should never forget the fact that we have a e to the power 2 pi n i. But in this case, there is no reason to add another 2 pi n i because it's already that. If you add it, it's just going to be the same thing, okay, M with more work. So we can do the following. We can say that, okay, x ln 2 should equal 2 pi n i. Let me state it this time before I forget. n is an integer, like z for Zalin, okay? Great. So where do you go from here? Uh, we're going to be solving for x. So let's go ahead and isolate x. That will be 2 pi n i divided by ln 2. Now, you can definitely go ahead and do a couple different things here. For example, you can evaluate, wait a minute, what are we evaluating? What is n? n can be anything. So suppose n is equal to 0. This is going to give us the special solution x equals 0. And as you know, 2 to the power x equals 1 is satisfied by x equals 0. We know that, right? Come on. That was the, the most obvious solution. But what if n does not equal 1? I mean, what if the n does not equal 0? Then you're going to get some complex or imaginary solutions. For example, if n is equal to 1, we're going to get x equals 2 pi i divided by ln 2. You can also think of this as 2 pi over ln 2 multiplied by i. In other words, this is an imaginary number. Some multiple of i n. If you evaluate 2 pi over ln 2, by the way, uh, you got to remember, 2 pi is going to be about 6.28, but uh, ln 2 is less than 1 because 2 is less than e. It's going to be a little greater than, I think it's six point, uh, 9 point something. Anyways, it's going to be close to 9i. You get the idea. And is this really true? Like if I replace x with that, that's going to give me 1. Like are you saying or am I saying that 2 to the power 9i is approximately 1? How do you show that? That would be an interesting uh, method, right? But instead of just going off of an approximate value, I'm going to show you like how we can directly substitute this and come up with the solution or just verify the answer, right? Okay, so we're going to go ahead and replace x with 2 pi i over ln 2. And you can use the general form if you want, 2 pi n i, no big deal. But here we're going to write this as 2 to the power of 1 over ln 2 to the power 2 pi i, and now 2 to the power 1 over ln 2, you might want to write the 2 as e to the power ln 2, and that will be multiplied by 1 over ln 2, which is going to give us e, and then we will get e to the power 2 pi i, which is equal to 1. Remember, we just talked about it. That is the complexified version of 1. So this satisfies the equation. Therefore, it is a solution, and the general solution is this one. Of course, x equals 0 is a special solution. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.